name is Elizabeth Way, and I'm an assistant curator at the museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology. Did you know that the museum at FIT's collection is home to more than 50,000 fashion objects, which includes clothing as well as accessories? Accessories are often viewed as an afterthought to clothing, but they are powerful fashion objects. Not only can they make or break an outfit, they can reveal a wealth of information about fashion culture, as well as the socio-cultural context of the time period. In this video, I will examine a number of Euro-American women's accessories from the Museum at FIT's collection that date between 1800 and 1900. Be sure to tune in for a second video with my colleague, Melissa Mara Alvarez, to learn more about the Museum at FIT's 20th century accessories. High-end women's fashion was undergoing major changes in the Western world at the turn of the 19th century. These changes mostly came from fashion leaders in Paris and were spread through magazines and fashion plates like the ones shown here. The silhouette was becoming slimmer, which meant that women wore less structured undergarments. The waistline rose, and cotton, an expensive import at the time, had become a highly fashionable fabric. Neoclassical ideas tied to the French Revolution inspired fashions that mimicked ancient Greek statues. In general, women's gowns for both day and evening became much simpler than the styles of the preceding decades. Therefore, accessories became even more visible and important in expressing fashionable identity and social status. Throughout the 19th century, fashionable women wore the same basic set of accessories. These included hats, shawls, parasols, fans, handkerchiefs, reticules, gloves, stockings, and shoes. These fashion items were necessary to not only stay in fashion, but were required to appear completely and respectably dressed in public. Some, like gloves, stockings, and handkerchiefs, changed very little. But technological innovations, like new production methods and chemical dyes, expanded the variety of colors and styles available. These bright red stockings from the end of the century, for example, have a fun motif of playing cards knitted into them. Other accessories, like fans and parasols, retained the same basic shapes over the decades, but reflected the current vogue in colors, proportions, motifs, and embellishments. In 19th century society, women used fans to exhibit femininity and grace. They were essential tools used to perform their charms, especially at formal parties and balls, where they could be used to flirtatiously reveal and conceal the face through orchestrated gestures. This print from 1850 shows how fans could facilitate romance. Some fans were precious luxury items, hand-painted and embellished or made with expensive materials like ivory and silk. As industrialization increased, however, fans could also be cheaply produced and they became widely accessible. Parasols could be used in similar ways as fans, highlighting graceful gestures and blocking or inviting the looks of others. But a parasol's primary function was to protect women's skin from the sun and tanning. Ladies of leisure were not expected to work, especially outdoors, and white, untanned skin indicated not only wealth, but ladylike gentility. Playing into idealizations of middle and upper class white women as the fairer sex, parasols became linked to ideas about gender and class. Colonialism expanded over the century as many Europeans consciously created racial hierarchies to justify the oppressive domination of other peoples, fair skin became even more important. Parasols played an important role in maintaining the concept of white women as the peak of civilized femininity. Gloves were also worn throughout the period to protect women's hands from the sun and other elements. Mainstream society equated small, unmarred, white hands with ladylike qualities that also set women of leisure apart from the working classes. When women of color throughout the Eurocentric world engaged in fashion and donned accessories such as gloves, parasols, and fans, they resisted, disrupted, and expanded mainstream ideas of femininity, respectability, and style. Hats or bonnets were worn throughout the 19th century, but their silhouettes and embellishments changed quickly and dramatically, and many different styles were popular at once. Throughout this period, women were not considered decently dressed to leave the house during the day without covering their heads. Making hats an important accessory to express modesty, propriety, and femininity. 
but they were also an outlet for individuality and style. Women wore an enormous variety of hats, from turbans inspired by Near Eastern cultures to military styles borrowed from menswear. Additionally, millinery was an important source of employment for women. Hats not only worked with changing hairstyles, but also emphasized or balanced the shifting dress silhouettes of the periods. For example, they grew to huge sizes during the 1820s to balance widening skirts. Bonnets with deep brims and interior decoration that framed the face were popular during the 1830s and 1840s. Small hats that perched on the head and bonnets that exposed the hairline were fashionable styles during the 1860s and 1870s. They could be made from fabrics, fur, or woven straw, and included embellishments like ornaments, flowers, and ribbons that tied under the chin, shown in this portrait from 1875. Other fashionable head and hair accessories included hairnets and fabric headdresses. At the end of the 19th century, lots of styles, both large and small, were fashionable, and many included elaborate feathered embellishments. Some accessories were especially important during certain periods and took on charged social meanings. At the beginning of the 19th century, for example, the style for simple and thin neoclassical gowns made shawls a practical choice. The most fashionable and expensive shawls in Europe were imported from Kashmir in northern India and featured the elongated, teardrop-shaped bota motif seen in this fashion plate. Intricately hand-woven Kashmiri shawls made from Kashmir goat hair were prized by the Mughal imperial courts in India from the 16th century and were worn by elite men and women throughout Asia. Men often wore them at the waist. French soldiers fighting a Napoleon's invasion of the Ottoman Empire at the turn of the 19th century brought Kashmiri shawls home as gifts, and the Empress Josephine helped popularize them in women's fashion. European textile manufacturers quickly found ways to copy the Kashmiri shawls with cheaper production methods and materials. The town of Paisley in Scotland became known for their imitation Kashmiri shawls, and the bota pattern became known as Paisley. Kashmiri shawls, both authentic and imitation, remained popular in fashion in both Europe and India for most of the 19th century. These shawls symbolized a grand tradition of textile artisanship in India, which was in dramatic decline due to British colonization. In Europe, they were highly exoticized symbols of imperialism. Reticules, or cloth handbags, were another important accessory during the early 19th century. In previous decades, when wide skirts were popular, women carried their personal items in pockets. But the new, narrower silhouette could not conceal pockets, and women began to carry reticules. Upper-class women did not carry much money at this time. Most items were bought on credit. However, reticules symbolized women moving outside the domestic sphere. They were important precursors to the handbags and purses that emerged during the 1880s, which further emphasized women's growing independence, spending power, and visibility in public. During the early 19th century, fashionable shoes worn for formal occasions were delicate and wore out quickly. They were made from brightly colored leathers and silk fabrics. Right and left shoes were not designated, and shoes could be worn on either foot. In most periods of the 19th century, long skirts covered shoes, and their silhouettes changed slowly. Significant style shifts were not seen until the last decades of the 19th century. Heels became higher, and elongated pointed toes were fashionable. As women engaged in more physical activities during the second half of the 19th century, sturdier leather boots became a practical and fashionable option. While some featured high heels, others had lower heels that could be worn for walking and typical daytime activities, but also for sports like bicycling. By the turn of the 20th century, women's fashion looked very different from the beginning of the 19th. The silhouette was corseted into an hourglass shape and more practical separates and suits were fashionable, as well as sporty accessories borrowed from menswear, such as straw boater hats. However, most of the same accessories were still vital to women's wardrobes. These accessories were adapted not only to women's changing fashion, but to their expanding activities and roles in society.